Okay, and we will move on to question 21. So uh, 21, express uh, 20 over x squared minus 36 minus 2 over x minus 6 times by 1 over 4 minus x. As a single fraction in its simplest form. Okay, um, so the first thing I'm going to look at is simplifying this. Um, so subtracting them from each other. Uh, so I'm going to call, I'm going to factorise the bottom fraction first of all. So that's going to be uh, 20 over, and we've got a difference of two squares again here. Uh, so that's going to be x plus 6 and x minus 6. Uh, minus, and then I'm going to um, make the common denominator for the second part of that. Uh, so I'm going to make that over uh, same denominator. So x plus 6 times by x minus 6. To do that, I've times the denominator by x plus 6. So I need to times the numerator by x plus 6. Um, and I'll leave it as a factorised version for now. No, actually, I won't. Just change my mind. Um, so that's going to give me uh, 2x uh, plus 12. And once I've done that, I still need to multiply that by 1 over 4 minus x. OK, um, so let's carry on with the top line then. The top line now then is going to be uh, 20 minus 12 is going to be 8. So that's going to be 8 minus 2x ah, divided by the denominator of x plus 6 times by x minus 6. Uh, and that's going to be times by the second fraction. Uh, so, yeah, you understand what I mean. Um, OK, so I can factorise the top line now. Um, so I'm going to take out 2 as a common factor. So that's going to be 2 times by 4 minus x, which links to this here, um, times by x plus 6 times by x minus 6. That's going to be times by 1 over 4 minus x. And then we can cancel out by the four minus x's. So if I cancel, put a line through that and that, um, we would get, and this is going to be my final answer. So we're going to have it as two over x plus six. So my erase button, x plus six times by x minus six. There we go. Um, let's just ask for a single fraction in its simplest form. So I would say that that was in its simplest form. I could say that that was x squared minus 36, um, but I don't think that's any really any more simpler. Uh, we've got fully factorised there. Um, OK, so is that the only question on the page? It is. So the mark scheme, we've got four, three marks available here. Uh, let's look. So uh, method one for writing the first two fractions with a common denominator. Um, so we will mark in blue. Uh, so we've got common denominator there. So that's my first method mark. Uh, it says M1 for simplifying the first two fractions to a simple fraction and expanding and simplifying the numerator must be correct and shown intention to multiply by 1 over 4 minus x. So that's our second method mark. And then final mark for they've written it as 2 over x squared minus 36 but they've said all equivalent and they've given my example, uh, my answer. So we pick up our A1 there. OK. Um, question 22 then. Find an expression for X in terms of K and N. Uh, so in effect, I want this as a single power of two. So I'm going to start by saying that um, two to the power K divided by uh, 4 is 2 squared, so that's going to be uh, 2 to the power 2n, and that's going to be equal to 2x. Right, and then if I simplify that, we subtract the powers, so that would be 2 to the k minus 2n, and that's going to be equal to 2 to the power x. So x is going to be equal to k minus 2n. OK, and that's the only one on the page. So if we go to the mark scheme and I'll mark in red, uh, we are looking at M1 for writing 4 to the power N as 2 to the power 2 to the N or 2 to the 2N. So we pick up our first M1 there. And then an A1 for K minus 2N. So A1 there. OK. Question 23 then. 
Um, the point A has the coordinate of minus three, two. It lies on a straight line with the equation. It lies on the straight line with the equation. Y is equal to F of X. Find the coordinates of the image of the point A on the straight line with the equation. Y is equal to F of X minus two. Uh, so that would equate to subtracting two from my, uh, subtracting three from my Y, y coordinate. So the coordinate is going to become minus three, uh, minus one. Uh, for the second one, so plus five, so that's going to be adding five to my y coordinate, adding five to y. Uh, so we're looking at minus three, seven. Okay, here is a sketch of part of a curve of equation y is equal to g of x. Um, Point B has a coordinate of PQ and it lies on the curve. Find the coordinate of the image of point B on the curve with the equation of Y is equal to minus G X minus C. Okay, so. I'm going to have to write P and Q in terms of C. Okay, so first of all, um, in effect, this minus would have the effect of uh, reflection in the y-axis uh, so that would move that point to uh, p minus q and then the minus c would have the effect of adding c to my p coordinate i'm looking at p plus c minus q i think that's all i'm looking for here uh, P plus C minus Q. Okay, and if we go to the mark scheme, then um, let's have a look. So uh, where are we? It's just a B1 mark for the coordinate minus three minus one. So B1, and then the same again, B1 for minus three, seven. And then uh, it says, uh, okay, I've got it right. So it just says B2 for that correct. Um, but it does say B1 for either the X coordinate of P plus C or minus Q for the Y coordinate. Okay. Um, question 24, express three plus root eight divided by uh, root two minus one all squared. Uh, in the form of P plus root Q, where P and Q are integers. Show each stage of your working clearly. Um, okay, so. Let's see. I don't think there's anything particularly fancy I can do regarding this. I'm just having a, a 30 second think about it. Right, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the third on the numerator. So that's going to become three plus uh, uh, four times two. So that would be two root two. And then my denominator, I'm going to square that out. So that's going to give me uh, root two squared is two. Twice the product would be minus two root two uh, plus one. Uh, so that's going to give me, I'll now tidy that up ever so slightly, uh, 3 plus 2 root 2 divided by uh, 3 minus 2 root 2. Okay, um, so to rationalise the denominator then, I'm going to have to times by uh, 3 plus Two root two over three plus two root two. So my numerator is then going to become, uh, in effect, I'm squaring that. So that's going to that's going to give me. Just trying to see whether there's a, a, another shortcut I can take. Um, so that's going to give me nine uh, plus six plus twelve root two. Um, plus uh, four times two plus eight over uh, that's going to give me three minus four so that's going to give me uh, sorry that's going to give me nine 
minus four times two, so nine minus eight. So that's going to give me one. Uh, so that's going to give me um, seven. Uh, in this form, that's going to give me 17 plus 12 root two. Um, and I'm just looking, that's not quite in the form it asked for. Uh, so just to put it in that form, normally they'd ask for it in the simplified third. Um, it seems a bit strange to do it in, in the opposite direction, but I'm going to go for it, placing it in the same version as the question asks. Uh, so that's going to be 144 times by 2, so that would be the same as 17 plus 200, square root of 288. And that is in now in the form that it asked for, P plus root Q. So I'm looking at 17 plus square root of 288. OK, um, right. Only question on the page. So if we go to the mark scheme for that, then. So um, where are we? Question 24. Uh, M1 for expanding the denominator. Um, so M1 for expanding the denominator and M1 for method of rationalizing the denominator. So that's my M1 there. Correct expansion of the brackets. So that is my M1 there. And then an A1 for 17 plus root 288. Okay, there we go. Right, and question 25 then. Uh, Kara throws four fair six-sided dice. That's uh, so the last question of probability one. This should be juicy. Uh, the faces of each dice are labelled with the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. Work out the probability that at least one of the dice lands on an even number. So she's going to throw it four times. Um, so at least at least one of the dice lands on an even number. Um, that you could do this in really quite, how many marks is this? Three marks. Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to work out the probability that it la that it only lands on an even number each time, and then just do one minus that probability. So if I treat that as one minus. Uh, probability it lands on an even number is going to be a half uh, to the power of four because uh, in effect it's going to be a probability of it only being an even number is going to be a half times a half times a half times a half so it's going to be to the power of four so that's going to be one might whoops a daisy okay um something's happened there just uh, move that out the way. Okay, so that's going to be one minus uh, one to the power of four is one, two to the power of four is two, four, eight, sixteen. So I'm looking at one minus one sixteenth, which is going to be fifteen over sixteen. Okay, so that's um, fairly straightforward. Um, if you'd have done probability it lands only on an even, plus the probability of it lands on one even, plus the probability it lands on two evens, and so on. Uh, that would be quite a complicated question. Um, so hopefully you spotted that. Um, even so, though, you should be able to work it through and get the same value. Um, right, let's go to the mark scheme for that then. So... Okay, they've suggested. Yeah, they have suggested the the longer method. Oh, although um, technically speaking, they've covered it in the mark scheme anyway. Um, M1 finding the probability of one of the correct combinations, e.g., and we found the correct probability of it all being odd. So we have we do pick up that method mark. Uh, we would pick that up there in effect. M1. Uh, for complete method, which gets us in effect, and the mark scheme does say that as an option, M1 and A1 for 15 over 16. Should have really written it on the answer line. 
both right on the end of the line as well. 15 over 16 for a one mark. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the paper. Right, okay, great. Um, so that's the paper. Um, other than a couple of, um, what did I think of the paper? Uh, I thought it was a, a decent paper. Um, I didn't think there was much in the real top, top end, sort of, sort of the grade five, nine material. Um, I thought there was quite a lot of factorizing quadratics earlier on in the paper. Uh, particularly with a uh, non um, one x coefficient. There was an example of it here, um, and there was an same again here. Uh, so it appeared twice within two questions. I thought it was quite algebra heavy, uh, but you'd expect that from a paper one normally, I guess. Um, okay, I hope you found the video useful. Oh, before I uh, sign off, I will bring up the, the back of the mark scheme just for anyone that's particularly interested. I'll leave it up for a minute or so. So you've got um, here, you've got each of the questions um, and then the actual topic name. Uh, that means that uh, if you particularly struggled on, let's say question 15, you can find the topic there and then go away and do some independent revision if uh, me talking you through the solution wasn't enough. Uh, Sparks is brilliant for that, um, although you can use other platforms if you would prefer. Uh, but Sparks is my school's current one um, and we're, we're really liking it. Um, suggested grey boundaries and I'm not fully sure what these are based on. Candidates achieving, okay. Um, I'm sure they've done some very uh, complicated statistical model um, based on each of the grades, um, but they're giving that as a suggested grey boundary, uh, suggesting 11 marks for a four, that's quite low. Um, okay. Um, possible. Okay. Um, I'll sign off there. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and uh, feel free to ask any questions in uh, any uh, uh, chat function that's attached, uh, whether this is on Teams or on YouTube. Feel free to add a, a comment, a question, or any problems that you spot. Uh, thanks again, and I'll see you soon.